Snowpiercer is an enormous 1001 carriage arc train meant to ride out the climate apocalypse, but can it actually exist? Let's find out. Before I begin, I'll be talking about the Snowpiercer series, not the movie. However, both are separate adaptations of the same French graphic novel. But both the series and the movie exist in their own timeline and universe. In this video, I'll be breaking down the construction of the train from the outer hull to the eternal engine. There has been some talk about how the 10 mile arc train can't ex actually exist due to the maintenance of both the train and the track. And it's just a far fetched pipe dream. It seemed like half of those people were on one side of the debate and the rest were on the other. And here was my reaction to that. Okay, about half and half. That means half you were stupid. Discuss. But everyone trying to disprove Snowpiercer's plausibility never actually tried to prove the train could exist. But I did just that. So here's what I found out. Some people were right about how under extreme cold temperatures, the train and Snowpiercer's hull could never hold up and would need to be maintained just after a few months of freezing temperatures. But it all depends on what metal was used for the track and the train hull. So I have created a chart for the six most common construction metals and the properties. Now let's go over them. Throughout the three seasons of Snowpiercer so far, we have learned things about the train and the track it travels on. We know that both the track and Snowpiercer's hull cannot be corroded by sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and carbon dioxide. Which means cheap metals like iron and steel would certainly never consider in the construction of the track and the train. Now copper, on the other hand, is immune to corrosion, but it can't handle extreme cold temperatures. CW7 caused the world to freeze to a minimum of minus 90 Celsius and a maximum of minus 130 Celsius. So copper is out. Moving on to carbon steel. Depending on what grade the carbon steel is, a track made of carbon steel could probably handle temperatures that low for many years without maintenance but carbon steel can be corroded. Now, aluminum is known to be quite rust resistant and it can even get stronger in extreme cold temperatures and it won't break down due to contact with moisture. I also found out that it has a lifespan of 40 years under normal weather conditions, but let's push that to 30 for the frozen hellscape of Snowpiercer. Moving on to the last important thing, the cost of materials. Let's assume Will Ford would create his tracks and trains in the most efficient but cheapest way possible. Then aluminum trains would be the most efficient but cheapest way possible. Then aluminum might not be the best to go with. However, cost all depends on where it's coming from and the status of the economy. And since we have one more metal left to discuss, I won't be making any conclusions just yet. Much like aluminum, stainless steel is highly resistant to corrosion and rust. It can also handle extreme cold temperatures and holds up under moisture quite well. However, stainless steel is not all maintenance free. Meaning if it gets dirty, you should probably clean it and dirt on stainless steel is quite noticeable. Now let's talk about the cost of materials. Stainless steel can be more expensive than aluminum, depending on if you're looking at the weight or volume. I don't think money would be an obstacle for Wilford. He's a billionaire with investors. He made his fortune from Wilford Industries. He might have been the richest man in the world before the freeze. As of season 3 of Snowpiercer, he's in his early 60s. So he was probably around 30 when he found little teen Melanie. Well, Ford Industries was probably a small company back then and it grew into a billion dollar empire. In conclusion, aluminum and stainless steel do seem to be what the track and Snowpiercer's hull are made from. And that's why they have held up for seven years. And according to Bennett, can hold up for another two decades, perhaps even 30 years. If they avoid derailment, another issue I should probably address. When Wilford and Melanie found out that CW7 would freeze the world, he likely made improvements to his train, adding cars, trouble checking that Snowpiercer's buggy motors would stick to the train track like a magnet, even if hit by an extreme avalanche. Now, neither aluminum or stainless steel is magnetic, but that doesn't mean Wilford didn't add an element that was magnetic to the composition of aluminum and stainless steel that was used for construction. However, if he did that, it might have compromised their corrosion, temperature, moisture resistance in some way or another. In my research, I found the plans for the engine internal started in 2014, and the freeze happened in 2020. So Melanie was working on the engine internal on Big Alice when Alex was just a little kid. 
This also might have been when Melanie started to realize that she had to keep Alex away from Wilford. Going back to the engine, it's a perpetual motion machine that propels the train forward with the use of hydrogen gathered from the snow outside the train. But this doesn't really work for a world that isn't frozen over. But like cruise ships, engine must have a fuel tank or two. But for Snowpiercer, this tank is connected to the electrolysis system that's responsible for taking the hydrogen out of the gathered snow from the outside, which is controlled by the God module. This process is also how electricity is made for the train and the battery banks. The hydrogen engine creates electricity for the train to maintain its speed, so it can gather more snow and feed the engine, creating a never-ending loop, which is how Snowpiercer and Big Alice are perpetual motion machines. For the phrase, I assume the fuel tanks were filled whenever they got to a new station. Much like how a cruise ship dock gets supplies, then head off to the next destination. But since we don't know how many Wolford stations there were, we don't know how often Snowpiercer or whatever restocked their fuel and supplies. Which brings us to Big Alice. This prototype engine served as a supply train meant to dock with Snowpiercer's tail while in motion. So if the fuel ran low, Snowpiercer could have had its sister train deliver the fuel, then detach from the tail and head back to wherever it came from. This also means their eternal engine isn't really eternal, as the parts for their hydrogen engine would need to be replaced. It was just a marketing scheme by Wilford. Hopefully this answers some questions and explains how Snowpiercer would have functioned if the freeze never happened, and how it currently functions during the cold apocalypse, and how the track maintenance doesn't matter as much as you might think. This has been Frost Rider. Don't forget to share, like this video, and let me know your thoughts on this video in the comment section.